Good afternoon. I call this business meeting to order. Today the committee will consider four bills. S-2783, Miccosukee Reserved Area Amendments Act. S-3406, Technical Corrections to the Northwestern New Mexico Rural Water Projects Acts Act, Taos Pueblo Indian Water Rights Settlement Act, and Amet Litigation Settlement Act. S-4000, a bill to reaffirm the applicability of the Indian Reorganization Act to the Litton Rancheria of California and for other purposes. And S-4365, Veterinary Services to Improve Public Health in Rural Communities Act. S-2783 were, was introduced by Senator Rubio and Senator Scott. The bill would amend the Miccosukee Reserved Area to include the Osceola Camp as part of the Miccosukee Reserved Area and authorize the Secretary of the Interior to take actions to protect the camp from flooding due to ongoing ecosystem restoration activities in the Everglades. S-3406 was introduced by Senator Lujan and Senator Heinrich. The bill will restore approximately $18.5 million in back interest payments into three Indian water rights settlement trust funds benefiting the Navajo, Nambe, Pueblo, Powake, Pueblo, San Ildefonso Pueblo, Tesuque Pueblo, and for Taos Pueblo pursuant to the ratified water rights settlement. Senator Lujan, let me know later if I did the pronunciation uh, reasonably well. Uh, importantly, this bill will bring these tribes into parity with others who have settled their water rights claims without investment limitations placed on their funds. S-4000 was introduced by Senator Padilla. This bill will reaffirm, reaffirm the applicability of the Indian Reorganiz Act, uh, Reorganization Act to the Lytton Rancheria of California and clarify its eligibility to have land taken into trust to the Department of Interior's land into trust process. S-4365 was introduced by the Vice Chair Murkowski. The bill would amend the Indian Health Care Improvement Act to authorize the public health veterinary services and allow the use of public health service officers at the Indian Health Service to treat and combat endemic diseases that spread between animals and people such as rabies. I'll now turn to the Vice Chair for her opening statement. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thanks for the uh, business meeting today and to be able to process these uh, four bills in front of us. I'd like to comment briefly on S4365 that the committee is considering. This is our veterinary services to improve public health in rural communities. This, is, this would authorize IHS to offer public health veterinary services. This is including spay and neutering services to the tribes in an effort to reduce the number of stray dogs in native communities. Uh, I know that in, in my state it is not uncommon for, for dogs to actually outnumber the number of people in the villages. The Navajo Nation alone has an estimated 250,000 unknown dogs roaming its communities. The overpopulation of abandoned dogs in Indian country, or, or res dogs as they're sometimes called, is a significant public health and safety issue. According to IHS, more than 4,000 tribal members go to a hospital or seek outpatient care each year because of stray dog attacks on reservations. CDC studies have found that Native children are at the highest risk for dog attack hospitalizations above all other groups. And we know, unfortunately, that these attacks can be brutal, sometimes fatal. Um, press reports from a little over a year ago, a 13-year-old girl on the Navajo Nation was mauled to death while going out on a walk. That same year, a six-year-old boy on Spirit Lake Reservation in North Dakota killed by a pack of dogs. Um, his injuries were so severe that the FBI opened an investigation. Um, his case was followed a few months later by a fatal mauling of an elder on a northern Cheyenne Indian reservation in Montana. Uh, I mean, the, un unfortunately, the stories are just awful and they're 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 horrifying. Uh, I certainly hear from from folks in in, in villages. Uh, we've seen young children that have lost their lives in Fort Yukon, Akiachak, Napaskiak, Kotzebue. Recently, uh, children were attacked by stray dogs in Antioch and Chivak, and, and one three-year-old little girl was medevaced hundreds of miles to Anchorage for surgery because of the injuries. So the stories are awful, um, and the problem is, is that our remote and native communities lack adequate, consistent services to spay and neuter our dogs. I don't know about you, but when the veterinarian comes out into these regions. They, they have more sway and stroke than any doctor or nurse or certainly a politician. Um, what, what we know is 
if we can get these consistent services to spay and neuter dogs, it's the most humane and effective way to reduce the stray dog populations. So what this does is it utilizes um, IHS 638 self-governance agreements and the U.S. Public Health Service Commission Corps to bring more vets to places like rural Alaska and the Navajo Nation. Um, we've seen support growing. It's been endorsed by the Alaska Native Health Consortium, AFN, uh, American Veterinary Medical Association, and elected leaders on the Navajo Nation. I, I want to take just a second to emphasize that this would help us curb the transmission of rabies and parasites and other diseases from wild and unvaccinated dogs, but it's not intended to address or respond to the new CDC requirements for importing dogs into the United States. The big issue for us as a border state, um, our bill aims to expand vet services in native villages, but CDC's new requirements may have an outsized impact on my state and could effectively hinder access to veterinary care in Alaska. So I've asked CDC to, to delay implementing that rule in order to meet our somewhat unique geographical and logistical challenges. So I just wanted to set that out there that these are two separate things. This is a pretty common sense bill that provides IHS with the authority to support public health veterinary services in Indian country where we've seen problems with, with dog attacks ignored for just far too long. So with that, uh, I would urge my colleagues to support the bill. Thank you, Vice Chair Murkowski. Are there any uh, members or senators wishing to make an opening statement? Uh, Senator Heinrich. Uh, Not yet, apparently. Oh. Uh, <laughs> thank you. Uh, hearing none, I'll turn to the bills. Without objection, the committee will proceed to consider S-2783, S-3406, and S-4000 and block. Is there any discussion? Without objection, the committee will vote to report the bills and block. Those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, say no. The ayes have it, and 2783, 3406, and 4000 are re ordered reported without amendment. Without objection, I call up S-4365, Senator Murkowski and I, Timed, uh, timely filed amendment number NEW24594, which makes technical and clarifying changes to the bill as introduced. Without objection, the amendment is adopted and the committee will vote to report S4365 as amended. Those in favor say aye. aye. Opposed say no. The ayes have it and S4365 is ordered reported with an amendment. And I want to thank the members for getting the business of our committee completed expeditiously today. I ask unanimous consent that the staff be allowed to make technical and conforming changes. There being no objections or further business before the committee, this meeting is adjourned. <laughs>